because you can continue to do updates after the campaign's finished, that basically says, hey, just spoke at Comic-Con and announced these dates when the thing's gonna come out. And then that gets everybody really excited again. Um, and hopefully they're all telling their friends because ultimately the goal is to spread the, the movie. I feel like your video should do one of three things, excite, inspire, or pull at someone's heartstrings. And if it can do all three, then, then you're golden. Your campaign is a production of itself. It's your calling card. So like Erica said, if this is a film and your pitch video is not film quality, why do I want to see your film? You have to, your call, if this is your calling card, and I can't tell you how many campaigns, like I, I believe Dan had mentioned, um, go on to raise more money afterwards or get equity investors afterwards because they watched how you ran your campaign. You ran it like a professional production. You put professional time, hard work, and effort into it. So now you have my trust that you know what you're doing, that you're a filmmaker that can make this happen. And like Mark was saying, with the backers and the communications, gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. I have my clients thank them every which way you can, on Facebook, on Twitter, in an update. And yes, then people are more likely to donate at the end to help you get to the finish line because you made them feel appreciated. I don't think it's possible to work too hard on your video. Um, for uh, the last campaign I did, it was for a feature film called Yanni and Divine Meet the Apocalypse, and um, we shot the video over five months. Um, my partner grew his beard out, uh, I grew my roots out, and we got progressively more and more disgusting, and the clothes we were wearing got dirty. We went to lots of different apocalyptic locations, and in the two minutes or whatever that the video was, we, got, we went from clean and nice to absolutely disgusting. And it was probably more work than it actually shows up in the video, but that's how we were filming the movie, too. We filmed it over a long period of time and got more and more disgusting. So I got to grow my roots out really long twice, which was excellent. But we also, we did a video every single day for our campaign, um, which maybe didn't um, work as well as I had hoped, but it, you know, we shot, um, we took people who were in our movie, uh, Barry Bostwick and was in the movie, and he did a really cute little um, thing from the set of the Scorpion King movie he was shooting in Romania, and we cut it and put it up. Um, Harry Groner and Armin Shimmerman from Buffy, um, we made them, we made Harry eat a spider, and uh, Armin put his teeth back in, which must mean he really likes us because <laughs> I don't think he enjoyed, um, he played Quark on Deep Space Nine. I don't think he enjoyed wearing those teeth very much. Uh, we had Janet Varney, who is the voice of Korra on Legend of Korra, and we had her um, pretending to think that she had her powers. And um, so we did a cute little video of that. And then we did um, a pocket tips, which were like tips for surviving the apocalypse. And we had people who um, were friends, at, or you know, we'd have an idea for one. We had one friend who was really, really skinny, and it's like, well, let's make him eat dog biscuits. And, <laughs> and um, you know, other people doing, you know, putting mud on their face, because you can use mud for mud mask, you know? So we had one for every single day of the campaign. And that's probably more work than anybody should ever do. Um, but like I said, you can't do too much. And, you, uh, you fund it, yeah. and it's content, content, content.